YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and in this video happy Thursday I love y'all I you 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 right there watching this you and that person next to you if you watching with somebody I love both of y'all and I appreciate you all's time uh, I appreciate you all taking the time out of your day to come through and have a little chit chat with team keep it clean anyway today the Ravens they had a presser. We've been missing these presses. I know we got a little mini presser yesterday, but we got another one today. And it started off with Mr. J.H. Not John Harbaugh, but Justin Houston. And he talked about as far as the defense. He said they, they're not where they want to be at right now. So they still got some room for improvement. And we certainly know that they do in the tackling department. And by the way, they will be in pads again today to work on that tackling. Now, um, <laughs> on that one drive against the Broncos, that padded practice did not work, but throughout the game, it certainly improved. Every other drive besides that one, they tackled a lot better. I guess they were just, I don't know what was going on. Maybe that drive, they were just testing out some new stuff. I don't know. Anyway, um, he said the, the key with the pass rush uh, is just staying consistent and putting yourselves in pass rush situations. And what he meant by that, which he clarified, he said that's stopping them on first and second down. Because you stop the team on first and second down, it's like, oh, third down, especially third and long. Oh, yeah, let's go eat. And they ate because they got, what, five sacks? Adafi Away had one. Bowser had two, which I didn't even know. I thought I knew he had one, but I don't remember the second one. Uh, Justin Houston had one. And I, I originally didn't even think that was a sack. I thought he just stopped the quarterback. I did not think he stopped him behind a line of scrimmage. I thought the quarterback had passed the line of scrimmage. But, boy, was I wrong. Um, and then at that fifth sack, I just still don't remember who it was. So my apologies. Anyway. He said that um, it was nice to get his first sack as a Raven. And he said, hopefully, there are many more on the way. And yes, I think every single Ravens fan would agree with you, Justin Houston, that we hope that there are many more on the way. Um, now, they asked about um, what, what are you going to do when you get that 100th sack? What's going to happen? Are you going to celebrate? He said, no. He said he does not intend to celebrate at all. But he said he does plan on asking who, whatever quarterback it happens against, he does want to ask, can he get the jersey? He said he don't even want the ball. He said he wants the jersey. And I was like, oh, I never heard anything like that before, but I like it. Because this is who you got to sack. Like the, the ball for somebody who got a sack, it doesn't mean as much because the ball, it just, no. If it's your hundredth touchdown or something like that and you receive a hundred rushing touchdown, whatever, okay, that's one thing. But Or, or if you're a quarterback, but on defense, your hundredth sack, yeah, I can understand why he would want the jersey. Um, and he also said that uh, they asked him, was there ever a time when you felt like you were going to go back to the Colts? And he said, in my mind, nah, not at all. So, well, I should have asked him if there was ever a time he thought he was going to go to the Steelers. Then that would have been a different question. But anyway, it, it, it's been working out. So that was the first JH. Uh, the second JH also spoke, and that was Mr. John Harbaugh, the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens, and Mr. King Petty, Mr. King Clapback. Because, you know, he, he got Vic Vangio together this week. But anyway, we've all moved on. Uh, he said that because um, he was asked about if when did he become aware that the Ravens were close to the record, that they were approaching that rushing record to get uh, all those uh, running games in a row, all those hundred yard rushing, yard, all those hundred yard rushing games in a row. And he said he doesn't even remember when he first became aware of the, of the streak. He said maybe this year, but he said he didn't know. Um, he also commended uh, the offensive coaches with how well that they've adjusted uh, with all the injuries that they suffered. And you know, Ravens have had a lot of injuries, especially on offense. Because again, Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, Justice Hill, Ronnie Stanley, uh, Rashad Bateman, Miles Boykin. Um, and the, the, the list just, it, it goes Nick Boyle, of course. Um, and the list just goes on. But they've, they've handled it. Tyree Phillips, that's another one. Uh, but they've handled it pretty well. And for them to be in the position that they're in right now, it does speak volumes to the coaching staff. You got to give credit where credit is due. Um, Harbaugh talked about how they'll, be, they'll need to be ready for how people defend them because it can be something different every week. Because he was asked about, um, oh, so now people were defending a passing game. They got to they actually worry about the passing game. And he said, yeah, that could change from week to week. And it's true. Somebody could be on point defending the passing game. Okay, you got to have that running game ready too. You, you, you just got to be ready for everything. And, yeah, he expressed that. Um, he said that reporters... They kept bringing up the success of the passing game, uh, but Hobbs just said, yeah, that's cool, but we're we just trying to focus on winning the next game. So that them just concentrating on the next opponent up 
it seems to be something that's that's resonating throughout the entire team. But it does start with the head coach. Um, he also asked about, and this was a really good question. He said, when uh, when Bateman and Boykin come back, how do you balance Proche and Duvernay's playing time? And that's a good problem to have. Uh, but I'm sure the uh, the coaches and stuff, we'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. Because you know, like, right off the bat, Bateman, he going to get his, but he's just going to get his a little bit. But eventually, like, that's your first round pick. So, you know, he's going to leapfrog Duvernay. He's going to leapfrog Proche. He's going to leapfrog Miles Boykin. He's going to be ahead of all those guys because he's a first round pick. First round pick, you ain't going to have him just sitting on a bench, just sitting there chilling the whole time. No. You invested in him, so you want a ROI. You want that return on investment. So he's going to be out there when it's his time. And again, once he gets comfortable and more comfortable, yeah, for sure. Um, and that was that. And, and of course, he was asked about Rashad Bateman, and he, and he gave the answer that we already know. Even though it's, all signs are pointing to Rashad Bateman playing this week, but nothing has been confirmed. But he did say, like, oh, we'll have to see where he's at and all that, and all you know, that coach talk. So, look, next up was LJ, Lamar Jackson. Uh, the first thing he was asked about was his book. He said his book is about dreaming. His book is just about um, people dreaming, whether you want to be doctors, whether you want to be this, whether you want to be that, uh, and people just going for it, going for whatever their dreams might be. Um, Hobbs, earlier, he had said that Lamar Jackson was not 100%. So somebody said, I think it was Jeff Zrebik, but I forget who it was. They were like, so Lamar Jackson, John Harbaugh just said you're not a 100%. So what percent are you? He said 101 I said, ooh, that boy, that boy done took some uh, some PR classes over these years. Because y'all remember Lamar early on with, with PR, with interviews and stuff. And I mean, that happens with anybody. Any, any, with anybody, the more that you do something, the more you're going to get comfortable with it. But that answer right there, I was like, all right, 101? Okay, I, I, I love it. And, and that's a little bit of that little pettiness in there, too. But I, I appreciated it so much. Uh, he said um, he was asked if there was any thoughts about him wearing extra pads. Uh, since, you know, all the late hits that he's been taking, ain't nobody saying nothing about them late hits. Um, he said no. He said he ain't trying to look like no transformer back there. Um, but he said that all quarterbacks in the league should be protected. But football is football. Uh, he said he knows that guys get aggressive and they probably don't mean anything by it. But to him wearing any extra pads, he shut that down right away. Um, he talked about the Monday Night Football game with how he knows the fans are going to be ready. He says when he sees them in the street, when he sees them in the store, they already hyped in, but so at the stadium, he knows it's going to be crazy there. And that should be a lot of fun. I'm going to have to turn up the TV a little extra loud just to try to get a little glimpse of it. Um, <laughs> when he was asked about how gratifying it is when defenses sell out to stop the run, but you can still beat them through the air. And he said he's a, he's a quarterback. He said that's what he's supposed to do. He said that's his job. He said he's happy that guys can make plays through the air too. So he's not like, again, with Lamar, he, he, he hardly ever focuses on those, the, the self-praise. He doesn't focus on the self-praise. He always gives credit to other people. Um, he was also asked about his, out, his outside the numbers, the improvement with him throwing outside the numbers. And they asked him, what changed? What happened? How, how did you work on improving that? He said, just practice. That was it. Now, uh, somebody asked him, I think it was Jeff Street, because he asked him about the Bills playoff game. And he stopped and he said, that that game is way out of my head. Way out of my head. That was way last year. He said, we ain't worried about that. We ain't thinking about that. We locked into this year. And, like, a lot of times, I don't even think about the Bills playoff game myself, even as a fan. Uh, so, you know, play, players move on a lot faster than we fans do. So the fact that me as a fan, I'm not thinking about it, then I know this is way past Lamar. Um, so anyway, he, uh, they, he was asked about the injuries and the fact that the team, this team isn't the team that they expected to have going in, meaning that there was supposed to be a lot of different people who were here, but they're not here due to them being hurt. Uh, but he gave credit to, um, to EDC in the front office. He said they did a great job of bringing guys in, uh, to replace people, uh, cause they, they obviously had to do that. And, and again, stay ready. So you ain't got to get ready. But in this Raven situation, all these injuries that they had, Oh, boy, there was just no way that you could be fully ready for that. But they have done a, a very good job of making adjustments, of making replacements, uh, and, again, just having guys that are ready. Uh, he said he was super proud of uh, how Duvernay and Proche have come along. Uh, and he said he's actually been proud of them since last year because the reporter asked him, how, how, proud of, how proud of them have you been this year? But he said he'd been proud of them since last year. Uh, he talked about the uh, kick return that Devin Duvernay got last year on Monday Night Football against the Chiefs. Uh, he talked about how just watching Proche, um, how, how much Proche has been working 
Uh, and he brought it up again. He'd been the first one there, last one out. And he said he's happy that Prochet has been getting, because he's is, is well-deserved, but he's been getting that playing time. So shout out to him for, for being patient and continuing to work. Uh, he was also asked if he was practicing today. He said, yeah. Uh, then he asked if his back, if his back uh, impacted the game last week at all since it was hurting. He said, no, it didn't impact the game. He said um, the, the day that his back was hurting, they held him out of practice, and then they held him out another day just so he could get a little extra rest. So he, he said he's fine. Um, and then with the officials, he said when he talks to the officials about like, hey, why y'all not calling this? He said they don't, even, they don't even bother looking him in the eye. I was like, oh, these guys are guilty. But it is what it is. So <sighs> Lamar is definitely not protected as a quarterback. Um, with Lamar Jackson, I feel like they, they treat him as if he is a running back uh, that just knows how to throw. Because running backs, they're obviously not protected, but they get the ball off on handoffs, or on catches, and on runs and whatever. Um, but with Lamar, he's, it, it'd be one thing if just he wasn't protected when he's outside of the pocket and when he scrambles, but he's not even protected inside the pocket. So just something to... Keep an eye on, and this is this is why even more why your offensive line is that much more important, because they offer you the first protection that you will get, um, and that's protecting guys from even getting to you. But when guys they go they get a little dirty, they get a little nasty, and they do the late hits and whatnot, that's part of the game. It's part of the game, and it's an unfortunate part of the game. But not everybody plays team. Keep it clean. Now we remember this. Um, remember in 2019 when teams just it, it was just clear as day. And even like comments like Tony Gonzalez even said it when he was like, oh, man, the way to stop Lamar Jackson, you got to hit him. You got to injure him. And I, I, I really could. I remember when I saw that on TV, I was like, he, he, just, he really said that? He really said that? This dude, this dude just really said that? I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. And um, in the 49ers game from 2019, then the Bills game from 2019 where they were just blatantly hitting Lamar Jackson late. And you could see it was clear as day, man. But it's the game, man. So up next after that uh, was Marlon Humphrey. Uh, he was asked about his podcast. He said it's been going real good, but he said sometimes it's hard to talk for forty minutes. I, I'm feel I feel like I'm on the reverse end of that. It, it's hard not to talk for forty minutes. So <laughs> anyway, he said as a rookie because he was asked, aren't, "Aren't you shy?" But when when did you recently like? Come out of your shell. And he said as a rookie, he just kind of did what he was told. He didn't say too much. Uh, but he said the organization really promoted uh, to be yourself. So that made him a lot more comfortable. And now we see the IG lives. We see him always talking, joking around, making all this noise. Uh, and he's become one of the more lovable characters on the Ravens, one of the more notable characters on the Ravens because he is very uh, outspoken there. Um, Jeff asked him last year with him not playing against the Colts, does, he, uh, does this game mean that much more to him? And he said, well, I wasn't even thinking about that. <laughs> and I, I forgot that he ain't played last year against the Colts. I remember he was out for that one game, but I did not remember which game it was. So. But Jeff Rebick reminded us all of that. Now, with Anthony Averitt, um, he was asked if Anthony Averitt's situation at Bama, with how he had to sort of wait his turn to play, if that helped Anthony Averitt in this situation, because it's the same thing. He's having to wait his turn to play. And Marlon Humphrey said he wasn't sure, but at the same time that he wasn't surprised. He said uh, Anthony Avery, the way that he's been playing, it's no surprise to the players. He said it has been a surprise to the fans, but to the players, he said they, they, they knew Anthony Avery could do this all along. So it was no shocker to them. Uh, he talked about Carson Wentz, and he said that Carson Wentz doesn't give up on any play. And that is true. Carson Wentz, you talk about the injuries and all that, you can talk about turnovers, but yeah, that, that dude is a fighter, straight up. He is a fighter. Um, and he mentioned how uh, he said he's a guy that you got to play all four quarters with. And they brought up the game last year against the Eagles. When the Ravens were out big. They were out to a big lead. It was like, all right, we cooling, we chilling, we vibing, whatnot. Then the Eagles just start coming back. They start coming back and coming back and coming back. Then it ended up being a super close game. It's like, oh, man, what Ravens, why y'all had to do that? Uh, and, it, yeah, it came down to the very last play, the two-point conversion. And then before, four years before that, when they played Carson Wentz in 2016, at M&T Bank Stadium, that game came down to a two-point conversion. So Carson Wentz, he plays these Ravens hard, man. He does. So Ravens, when they play him on Monday Night Football, they got to be ready. Again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Uh, game, game preview coming up very soon, by the way. Y'all stay on the lookout for that. Um, 
he talked about uh, when he watches Lamar. Marlon Humphrey, by the way, he said when he watches Lamar Jackson, he said he's just grateful that he, he doesn't have to go up against him. He said he never wants to play against him. Um, he said that the Broncos, they did a really good job of stopping the run. And he said that he was actually stat watching uh, because he wasn't sure if the Ravens were going to get that 100 uh, rushing yard record in the game against the Broncos. Uh, but he said he thought that the Ravens initially didn't get the record. Uh, and he said it's a testament to John Harbaugh and how well they've done uh, with the team and the roster that they were able to get it because it says a lot about the offensive line despite all the injuries. He said he was even ready to for them to put him out there on offense. And he said not even to catch the ball. He said he didn't need the ball to come his way. He said he would have been willing to just go out there and block. So, hey, you can't be mad at somebody like that, man. Um, and then he was asked about Lamar coming out to the whistle, to Omar's whistle from the wire. And Marla, <laughs> he said he wasn't a fan of the wire so he wasn't familiar with the whole whistle for when Lamar came out for the entrance. Um, and he said, hopefully he doesn't get too much heat for that. And it's crazy because we always say timing is everything. Right, at, right when he said that, as soon as he said that, that's when Ravens' internet just went out. And the stream just started messing up like crazy uh, for like the next like five minutes. So it was like in and out, in and out, in and out. Then it was out for a while and it just went crazy. And somebody made a joke. They said, oh, did somebody pull the wire? I really appreciated that joke so much. Because that's like a, a top tier, high quality, premium dad joke. So I loved it. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend with us for these however many minutes this was. I love you. I appreciate you. I hope y'all had a really great day. I'll see you later on. We out.